Okay, can y'all hear me? So I got chat on. Now I need to... No, it's so how to. Well, that's not it. <sighs> What's up, James? Have I stepped into an alternate timeline? Yes, bro. You have. When's the last time I streamed, man? When's the last time I streamed? Now, how do I share this link to, to Twitter, though? It's been so long, I forget how to do this. I feel like a noob. Still got the noties on too, let's go. Let's go, easily over a year. Yeah, I, 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 I would agree. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be walking through how I did this, uh, animation 3d animation so feel free to stay i just need to figure out how to share this link and i forget i forget how to share stuff maybe if i go to my channel i can do it that way i i completely forgot that i had 2k subs bro i'm gonna be honest with you no man i don't care about that Sorry, I'm trying to get this YouTube to work correctly, and it's just not cooperating. Oh, there we go. Live, right? Uh, is it this one? There we go. There we go, I got it. Jalen did secure the bag, bro. Congrats to him, seriously. That dude is just straight up. I don't know, though. Like, did he even have a good season last year? Like... I'm gonna give it like 10 minutes. We can just chill out and talk about some stuff. Uh, catch up. Maybe 20 minutes. I'm currently rendering something and it's almost done. So. I gotta tag some people. Um, I gotta share this link i got a tag yo so i actually deleted all of my I, i'm not checking the chat right now but i deleted all of my videos um i think garrett wanted to know neil um let's see let's go to the chat why am i hearing myself turn that off past defense improved a lot when he get, did it though run run d was the issue i don't Mm, I don't know though because I, I thought I remember um, watching watching him and he was just getting clapped like all year though he was just getting clapped all year though um, but let's talk about this this wallpaper I got though this is fire bro like I actually found this what's up Matt hey another one of my subscribers what's happening it's been so long guys yeah i haven't uh been been on this this youtube game and who knows how long oh did he really gave up one td all year when he was still in the jags bro i swear that man was getting toasted like i swear he was getting toasted maybe i'm thinking of a different cornerback but i swear he was one of them that was getting toasted on that team what's up matt but yeah it, it's I deleted all of my Madden videos off my channel. 
I deleted basically all of my live streams off my channel. I want to start completely fresh and from the beginning. I sound older. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am 22. Yeah, man, I've been chilling. How's, uh, you're out in Cali, right? I think, I think, I'm pretty sure this is the map that's out in Cali, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, man, I've, I've been good. Uh, I'm a, I'm a lot he healthier mentally, I would say. Um, this, that YouTube stuff with Madden really just took a toll on me and it just wasn't for me. So, kind of find a new career. Peak, what's happening, brother? How we doing? Uh, we're going to hop right into it soon, guys. I'm just letting this kind of, I'm kind of trying to milk it, milk the clock here for like another 20 minutes or so. If we can do that, that'd be awesome. And then I'll, I'll get into it. I just want to finish up this render that I'm working on, but I can show you guys what the render looks like um, while we wait. Let me pull it up on the live stream. Let's talk about this wallpaper though. Uh, I don't think I had the, do I have the initial one? So I had found, oh, I do have it. Where is it? Oh wait, did I delete it? No, I didn't. Lit. Okay. Nope. That that's my version. This is the initial. This is the initial wallpaper that I had found on the internet. I was too lazy to composite my own, so I found this one. And this shit's crisp. It's fire. I'm all about it. What what are my thoughts about the slate design? Dude, it, it, honestly, Pico, like your your work's getting a lot better, man. Just keep it up, bro. Seriously, keep it up. Like, I'm I'm seeing improvement. Um, you've you've kind of taken into consideration what I've told you. Um, you're using inspiration to create your own work, which is amazing to see. That that that's always good to you know find inspiration and then build off of that in, into your own your own style. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that, brother. Uh, apparently, Cup. I mean, I think Cooper Cup deserves it. I just, I'm just worried about his knee. You know, I'm worried about his ACL. All right, Matt. Have a good one, man. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love always. Why does that say that that's spam? That's not spam. Ram slinging that money around like it. Yeah, dude. They really are. To be honest, they are like. I don't know if Jay or Gov really, really, really deserve that. What's up, Josh? How we doing, bro? Welcome to... Okay, so so back to what I was saying, right? So I found this wallpaper on... I think... Actually, I could probably pull it up for you guys if you guys want to check it out. Um, this is where I buy a lot of my textures for 3D. Um, granted, I had to pay for textures because, you know, the way 3D works. But basically, they have a lot of 3... Uh, not 3k like 4k wallpapers and stuff pretty generic but i found black panther and i was like yo that's fire i'm gonna take that and then kind of make it into my own right so this is what theirs looked like and i'm like yeah you know it's kind of too distracting right like wasn't really feeling it so i took some exposures uh took some you know some other layers adjustment layers made it into my own and then added some grain uh in my camera raw at the end and that's what i came up with i like it a lot better personally it just fits 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 better with with what i have going on over here in my setup look at who we have before jericho yeah that's true that isn't warner yeah but did he really deserve that that big of a contract after blowing chunks last season though i'm gonna give it a few more minutes guys and then we will get started of kind of walking through what I did. Let me know like what you guys want to see first. You guys want to see my my C four D file first. Um, do I'm gonna show my inspiration first. Just let me know. Just let me know. Who else do we have in the stream, man? Say what's up. Say what's up. Man, I haven't done a live stream in probably over a year year and a half now. I think the last time I did one was ooh more than a year and a half. I think February of twenty. No, even before that because. My buddy was living with me back home and I never had time to really stream. So I would say my last stream stream may have been like December, man. Or it may have been when I first moved down here. I do remember doing some like Gronk wallpapers that looked like butt. So that could be it too. Let me make sure my frames aren't dropping. Okay, we're not dropping any frames. Praise the Lord for two GPUs because if I didn't have that, my PC probably would have crashed by now. Um... 
Ryan Tannehill got 90 mil. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill did not deserve 90 mil. I'm sorry. I would I would have liked to maybe sign him for a, a one another one year deal, and if he played up the par, then you give him the money. You don't give him the money when you you clearly knew Derrick Henry carried that team to the playoffs. It's tough for people ask for suggestions on on their designs or their videos, video graphics, especially when I'm so busy. But um, yeah, man, what do you guys want to talk about? What do you guys want to talk about? Talk about football starting up. Was it Thursday? Thursday the first game? Thursday night? Or is it Sunday? At least Goff had that Super Bowl run. <sighs> yeah, dude. I honestly think uh, Sean McVay is still questioning his his uh, his play calls since that Super Bowl. Tom honestly. Tomorrow? Yes, sir. Who's playing on Thursday night? I know the Giants and Steelers play Monday. Which I don't know if that's really primetime teams. I mean the Steelers, yeah, but you know, I'm I'm not sure if I'm feeling feeling the uh the Giants, but I could be completely wrong. Maybe this is their year. Come out come out of the womb, you know? Come out of the womb. If you guys haven't done so already, make sure you guys drop a like on the stream and uh we'll get started soon. Just just wanna catch up with you guys. It's been it's been a minute. You know, text only goes so far, so being able to talk talk. I'm all about it. For being an introvert, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Maybe make sure my, my emails are closed so you guys don't see that when I share my that side of my screen. All right. How many more renders we got? We got 12 more frames. Ugh, is that going to be another? Oof. Oof. Might be another 10 minutes. Be a little bit longer. Chiefs and Texans. Oof. That should be a fun game. I'm still a little upset that the Texans really got rid of Clowney like that, though. Like, they just straight up traded him. They said, we don't need you. We don't need you anymore. Even though you're, you know, part, part of our defense. We don't need you, though. One of the best linebackers slash DNs in the league. But we don't need you, though. And now he's on the Titans, right? Isn't it like a two-year deal or something like that? It's like a two-year deal. Um... Let's see. Oh, I know what I was going to show you guys. My bad. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Um, let's go. There. And there. Dude, I have so many files I got to go through. Like, so much stuff. Don't tell me. And it didn't even save that, bro. I can't. <sighs> okay. Well, this is what I'm going to be able to show for now. Um, it didn't save out properly, but that's all right. This is what I I guess what one of the style frames would look like. Obviously, this is not the best frame to be paused on, but you know. One year, 15 mil. Oh my goodness. I wonder why he went with the Titans. Like, does he think that they might they might make a push in the AFC this year? I mean, honestly, I know the Pats probably won't have the best year. Um, we're definitely going into rebuild stage, and I've accepted that. So I'm already kind of ready for our uh, our downfall for a while. But, you know. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's right. He did work with Vrabel. I completely forgot about that. And Vrabel was their defensive coordinator for what? Three seasons or something like that? Or like assistant? Or specifically for DNs or linebackers? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, Vrabel's a good coach, man. I, I can't... I can't hate on the guy. I think he's... I think he's up there. Um, if, if, he, if he gets a chance to go to the Super Bowl, I think... I think he'll pull through because defense is such an important asset for such a big game. That like I, I think, I think my guy can pull through. I'm waiting for some more people to come in that wanted to, to you know, watch the stream and kind of get a feel for what I do. Uh, let me quote my tweet.
Uh, I don't have my Photoshop files on here. They're all on my Mac that I don't use anymore. Raven's going to the bowl. Do you think so, bro? I don't know, man. Like, like Lamar's got to stop choking in that in that late that late game late season situations, man. Like he's got to step it up. Like you can have the best season of your life, but if you can't pull through in that that clutch time, it's like, what's the point? Oh uh, yeah, my layers are all over the place with that. Uh, let's see. Let's see, do I have any Photoshop documents even on here for sports? Oh, I have Saquon Barkley. That's all I got though. Eh, let's open it and walk through it for a little bit before I get into the, the 3D stuff. I, I, wa I want this this scene to finish rendering before I stop just because... Huh? Bro, do I have that phone already? I thought I had something up there. Okay, well, whatever. Who we got in the stream, man? Say what's up. How you guys doing? I, I literally can't tell who's in here because I don't have it pulled up. How many people are watching? It's probably one. It's probably just James, who was in a totally another country. Uh, we got what, three watching now? I actually gotta go in there and delete that video. Uh, let's... Let's go... Man, it's so whack how they changed the... Where's my live? Oh, there's my live streams on how they changed the way the YouTube stuff works. It's so confusing. Like, how do I delete this, bro? Can I, can I not delete this? More actions. Delete forever. There we go. I understand. Like, it's so weird. If you were doing YouTube like a year ago, you would understand that the interface changed for how you upload and how you maneuver through things. And it absolutely sucks. Like... I really don't like it, but I can't do anything about it. As long as the Mana Curse doesn't get Lamar, they should be fine. Well, sorry to break it to you, but it's probably going to happen again. It's absolutely nothing that'll ever break that. I think Mahomes is the only one to really break that curse. I forget Manning was 0-3 and on his first. Yeah, man. You never know. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's. Oh, no. I guess I can walk you through this. Josh, are you here? So I can show you what I did. Probably would benefit you since you're kind of start, starting to get into this stuff. I know for uh, Peak, he's kind of already been doing it. Um, turn all those off. What's in here? Oh, let's just drop shadows. <laughs> the curse hit AB so hard. Hey, man, it could be. That's true. I need to think about that. Where is... Holmes was lucky he was next in line. Man, his shit would've got clapped, bro. You know, I don't feel like going through that. What is that? Yo, gradient maps are tight though. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a reflection. Yeah, dude, Denver's screwed, bro. I mean, are they though? Are they really? What's this connect to? Oh, the ball. I don't even know that I made it blue. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, I'm just not gonna save that. We uh, I'll be posting this on Twitter for sure. I already posted on my Instagram before, but since I'm reworking this for a project, um, damn, bro, I got ten frames at two minutes a frame. It's about another twenty minutes. I might I might just end it right now and then get started. Chubb is coming off of ACL. Oh really? I, I didn't know that Chubb had an ACL injury. I would have I would have never thought. I must have missed that, or I just completely forgot. Yo, 
shout out to all the new followers on it on twitter though i appreciate it um you know i love posting my work i don't ever expect anything in return from anyone um so all the all the support is always amazing to see um i appreciate it guys thank you so much it really means a lot i know my last 3d animation i posted did really well um damn, so far back so i always re I always like to retweet everyone else's work to show support and show love i never expect anything in return um but it did really well almost 3k views with 158 likes and 23 retweets so i appreciate all of that guys thank you so much um so yeah unless lock becomes their next paint manning they're boned Bro, I don't even know if that lock guy is even good, bro. Like, it might just be a hype thing for people right now. Like, I'm going to need to see some, like, major improvements. Yeah, how's the quality of my mic, by the way? It's pretty close to my face, but I think it's sounding pretty good. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Right, exactly, James. You got the idea. Still waiting for some people to come in because I know some people wanted to see it and I told them Wednesday night was going to be my stream so I'll just kind of milk it out a little bit longer. Um, So we'll see. Who's in here, by the way? Is it just you, James? Yo, the crazy thing is, bro, I don't even really play video games no more. I mean, like, when I play, it's usually when I'm playing with friends i don't play my monitors anymore i only use my tv for for gaming now like a complete 360 actually like a 720 from a year and a half ago when i would strictly only play on my monitors it's crazy how far things have come all right peak i, I know you wanted to see the workflow so I'm, I'm just waiting on i think i i know garrett wanted to come in here i might oh he just he just liked it so he, he might stop in um i try not to at people on on posts anymore just because i know it might it might feel annoying to people um but sometimes you have to especially if somebody was gonna stop by to look at you know a workflow process and stuff like that i'm the og around here i mean technically i mean peter peter used to be in here a lot and he he's in the netherlands um i think i think it's daytime wait isn't it morning for you already or, or is it late night right now i think you're both from the same area if i'm not mistaken yeah i mean yeah i'm kind of the same like i really have only played more video games because of covid but i know once this ends i'll probably be back on my my true My true grind and whatnot. Anyone else new joining joining the stream yet? You're back in college soon. That's what's up. That's what's up. Man, I'm not gonna miss college though. Once I, uh, I'm gonna miss it for the people. Not gonna miss it for the workload. I'll tell you that right now. Not gonna miss it for the workload. Oh, I got seven more frames left, boys. About fourteen more minutes. Probably when I'll. <laughs> I should have just delay the stream, honestly, till eight thirty. That's all right. I want to talk to you guys. It's almost one a.m. He's a trooper. Yeah, I am. I am splitting college workload and client workload. Yes. Yep. I've realized that for an art student, your work speaks more for itself than the grade does. Granted, I have a really good GPA, but still, you know, I've focused my energy more on building my skills and less worrying about what the requirements were for a class. But yeah, I'm, I'm basically in hell right now with, with college and, and client work, but you know, it's whatever. I picked the school for a reason and it's honestly worked out for the better granted COVID kind of screwed everything up, but that's all right. 
Yeah, you and Pete have been in here for years, bro. I think Pete found me back in 20... I think you guys both found me back in 2017. When I started stream. I think it was 2017. Might have been 2018. Um, But yeah, dude, my, my channel is basically dead at this point. Like, everyone that follows me probably doesn't even watch my streams anymore, which is fine. Because I don't really stream, but I want to get back into it for, like showing off my work um to show you guys my workflow and kind of how i do things and the inspiration that i find granted my work is nowhere close to a top tier 3d artist yet but you know right around the madden 18 madden 18 oh man that game was terrible i think 17 was was like my my pop year for you know gaming and then like each year with Madden, it slowly dropped because of how bad, bad the games were and the servers were. Remember Madden 18? I think I was done with the game around like end of November. Like I was like wiped out. I was like, game sucks. Content sucks. Overall, it's just horrible. And then Madden 19 came out. And I think that's... Was that when I did that 24... That was when I did the 24-hour live stream. of that. That was brutal, by the way. But I did that 24-hour live stream. And then that died off like a month and a half later. I just didn't want to play it anymore because it sucked. Madden 20 game was already moved down to Florida. Didn't even buy the, the freaking thing because it was that bad. And 21 honestly looks just as worse, if not worse, than what's already been created. It's just copy and paste. <sighs> Trying to not, not downshame that game, but you know, from my personal experience, I just feel like it just doesn't get better. And it caters to... Uh, DDA, which I'm not a fan of. So now I'm playing Marvel Avengers because my buddy bought it and I'm game sharing with them, and that's actually, you know, it's fun because it's not it's not pay to win. All the DLC is free. You don't have to pay for anything. You just grind the game, and that's basically it. If you guys are new to the stream, make sure you guys can drop a like on it for me. That'd be awesome. Um, if you guys want to share it out to Twitter and whatnot and, you know, tell people to come by to see my workflow for 3D sports motion graphics, uh, feel free. Dude, I am stuttering up the wazoo because I just woke up from a nap. I don't, I didn't mean to take a nap. It just happened. All right. So we got, we got six more frames left. Halo, my mic on. Yeah, Halo. I don't know if you guys even heard that. Uh, friend, my friend sent me Snapchat. But yeah, that's the difference, you know. Exposure stuff. Yeah, cool, whatever. And I thought it looked sick, so I'm keeping it. And Black Panther is gonna be in the Avengers game, and that's all I'm ever gonna use because he's just that much of a badass. We got two people in the stream. Cool. Oh, I think I need to update too. I do. But I can't do it right now. Yo, this PC is a beast, bro. It's handling rendering and live streaming at the same time. That's that's a rare that's a rare combination to get. Okay. Frames are a little bit faster it'll be done soon it'll be done soon but yeah this is the process of 3d is waiting for something to finish rendering and then you're just so excited to see it but you have to wait so long i still have another uh 200 frames to go on another scene so fun 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 halo back in the day was goaded i never really got into halo i'm gonna be honest like i i didn't buy a 360 for halo i just bought a 360 because that's what i was given and then I just stuck with it. Like I just rid it out. Not really a fan of this texturing going on. I might have to fix that. But we'll see. 
All right, we're gonna get started soon. I just gotta just want these four frames to finish out. I don't know why that one took another 15 seconds longer, but I've been milking it for the last half hour, so I'm sorry. But I really want to get this render done real quick, and then I'll hop into my C45 from the Patriots, and we'll kind of walk through it. Um, if you have any questions on how I did things, I can show you some basic tools, um, and we'll we'll, we'll kind of go from there. And I'll, I'll talk about why Windows is 10 times better than Mac will ever be when it comes to this for specific reasons. Dude, that profile picture on my YouTube is from 2018, I think. I just got a haircut. I instantly went home and took this picture. You to use for my YouTube. That's when I first started doing Photoshop too, which kind of sparked this this move down here. I'm gonna be honest. I think now, like Call of Duty for me, it's just not it's just not that same itch, right? So I I have the new Call of Duty, like the full game, not just Warzone, but it just didn't really sit well with me. Um. So yeah. Since we don't I'm getting started on showing my workflow soon. There's a lot of pre-pro that goes in the, into this. You do a lot of thinking, uh, a lot of problem solving. But what else with it? It's just a lot of thinking and like figuring out, okay, what can be done in camera? What can be done in post? How can I save time in post so that I don't have to lose time in render for rendering out the same player, same graphics, stuff like that. Um, and setting up your buffers and stuff like that, which I'll kind of get into here in a minute. Warzone was fun. It was. I think. <sighs> I don't think it's really stale. I think it's still popular. But for me, it got stale because I was getting tired of always getting second place or third or fifth, you know, after playing so well and then dying to a camper that I just got sick of it. So I just uninstalled the game. Never yet to play it since. Once I graduate though, I'm taking a few weeks off to just regather, get re-inspired and just take time to hang out with my dad and my parents when they come down here to visit at the end of the month because I've been working my tail off for the last six, 16 months, I'll say, since I moved down here um, that I need a break. I need a long break. Can already feel my body getting fatigued. Battle Royale has never been your thing. Yeah, I think Fortnite was the only one. But when Fortnite was in its peak, it was when it first came out for like that first, what, year and a half when it was really fun to play. Like, yeah, you, you would get into the game with sweat sometimes, but it wasn't like a constant issue of going up against sweats. Like now when I play, I don't really ever even fight any teams until I really have to because I'm trying to go for the win, not for all the kills like I used to. But before I could go for the kills and get the win, but now it's like you push one team, you kill that team, and there's always going to be a third party sitting around, so it's just not worth worth the uh, the push anymore. I'm still I'm still waiting on a studio to to take a chance on me though, man. It's it's been tough. I haven't heard any emails. I haven't heard any any direct messages from anyone. One thing I've been told is everything's on freeze, and there's not much that I can really do to get around that. Uh, I wonder if my professor's watching this stream. He f he follows my my YouTube. This will be really awkward if he does. So he'll just roast me per usual on how I relay information the wrong way. Oof, I don't really know if I like. 
all that that's going on there. This is why this is why it's never good to just make someone change something just to give them something to do. It never turns out the right way. Let me see. What's this camera? It's camera three. I have this song stuck in my head and it won't leave. Wait, no, that's the old shot. That's the old one. We don't want the old one. We want this one. That's out of focus. Ah, I can deal with it. I can deal with it. All right, boys, we got two, three more frames left, and then we'll, well, technically two more frames now, and then we'll, oh, I will get started. I will get started. Let me know where I should start. Because I don't even know what I'm doing. Winging it per usual. Right, Got a retweet for the boy. Yep. Oh my god. I feel like I have an issue with retweeting. I always retweet everyone's stuff. Because it's good work. So I gotta share it with my followers. Granted, my followers are probably already following them. So it's not gonna do much. But... Gotta, gotta show love, man. Yo, how are my Celtics doing, though? Oof. Jalen's got 21 at the half. Let's go. It's my guy. Still got PSDs already. Yeah, man. The Pats gave, 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 him, gave him the clapping. Even, dude, that was like the lowest scoring Super Bowl that I've ever watched, but the most entertaining Super Bowl that I've ever watched. I'm going to be honest. Like, I really enjoyed a defensive game. Which does it doesn't happen often in sports nowadays. So when you get a, a game like that, like you need to appreciate it for what it is, not downgrade it because it was a what first touchdown wasn't scored till like the fourth quarter, I think. Three a.m. for total pain. Soul was crushed. Yeah, that must have been a rough night. Yeah, I was chilling that night. That was that was a good night. That was a good night for me. But then we lost to Nick Foles a year before that. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Where are my glasses? No, oh, they're over there. If Cooks catches one of those, it'll be totally different. Or if Jared Goff didn't totally underthrow a ball, where McCordy, I think it was Jason McCordy, ran like all the way from one hash to the other hash in the end zone to deflect the ball or something like that. So there's a lot of a lot of a lot of opportunity. And then that's when Gurley barely played that game, right? Because he was still hurt. I still can't believe when we played Philly in the Super Bowl and they didn't play Malcolm Butler. That was the saddest, the saddest night of my life. We were getting torched and we had a guy on the bench. I could have easily have, you know, made made a difference in that game. <sighs> that was sad. <laughs> Second nature. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, typical. Bro, same with Cleveland fans. All right, we're on the last frame, but same, same with uh, Cleveland fans. So I guess I'll kind of start with my inspiration on where I get my inspiration from a lot of the time. It's usually the same people. Um, just because... I don't really know why because it's just it's just because I guess I don't know I don't know how to word it so we're just gonna rock with it just fake it till you make it man but uh okay so we're on Behance let me make sure all my yeah okay they're all closed so we're on Behance right typical place to find inspiration from this guy Philip Bischel um don't know him personally but I know who he's worked for pretty well um one of them owns his own studio nathaniel house studios that i also go to inspiration for a lot of the time and the owner of that studio is my mentor so being able to see the work that they produce together is pretty awesome i would say jags fans uh jags fans are not it's not as brutal you actually need fans some history to experience right exactly so it's not as brutal because the jacks are, are kind of like 
they're kind of stuck in the middle right but anyways right so based off of the oh wow the animation that i did right i'm looking at all right i kind of want to go for like a dark theme right so i'm trying to find out what kind of stuff would look good what kind of textures would look nice um how far in the textures i want to push things um all right james there, there's a lot that kind of goes into it so I'll, I'll look at a few people like i pulled some inspiration from his this reel from 2017 just off of this look um i'll even something totally random like that's not a dark theme like let's say something like this i would just look at and be like you know i really like that texture right there with that roughness i really like that roughness in there let's try to figure something out that can not look like it but you know get that same that same uh feeling and attitude and, and uh and character off of it let me stop this because okay camera four let me go my takes what was that this project open project Let's c4d Okay. All right. So I'll kind of go through a few people, see what they've done, see how I can replicate something or make it into my own, try and get a feel for the animation. Still not the best animation, but always practicing, doing new things to get better for each project every single time. Because the only way that you'll get better is by practicing, right? Like you just don't get good at this stuff. Like it takes time. Get really good at this stuff. So these are a few of the people that I'll go to. Like I pulled some inspo from here, right? Like it's kind of got that same feel with this. Turn that off. Same kind of feel going on, right? With some stuff. All right, Vimeo, thanks for acting up. You know, just just kind of kind of get a feel for some stuff. See see what's going on. This looks like a warehouse kind of look. But it's not a warehouse it's completely different um so creating your environment making it look cool having cool angle shots etc obviously everyone's going to be different with how they approach things um for each one so something like this too it's pretty sweet which is crazy that some people aren't into this you know this 3d world and stuff because you can just get these very realistic almost like videography shots that are just crazy looking they just always come out good and they just look beautiful right chat what's happening bro how we doing man All right so this is where i kind of pull my inspo from um this studio i've gotten close with uh just through instagram messaging and you know always getting critiques stuff like that so i'll come over here i'll pull inspiration i'll kind of go in detail on like People are like, oh, how do you model? It's like, well, you don't really have to model some like a lot of the things, right? Like a lot of things already out there. You don't have to do that part. But for some stuff, you'll have to model because there's just they're just not there, right? So it really all depends on what you're going for. Um, I pulled inspiration from this on on how the rocks crack and has this cool, realistic textures. It has been a while, dude. It's been uh last time i streamed was i think like 18 months ago which is a long time ago right but you know i'll put in inspo from literally anything it doesn't have to be sports related whatsoever um and then i'll go in and make my scene and let's let's talk about the scene right so when you're looking at the scene right <sighs> nope not that camera this camera I just saw a notification <laughs> yeah you're like oh this kid Kevo's back back in business but anyways right so you got the scene you're looking at it you're like okay that looks pretty complicated well 
I'm gonna be honest, like it's really not. Like it's a little laggy because of streaming and whatnot, right? But it's pretty it's actually pretty simple. Like it's not it's literally a box, bro. Literally a box on the outside with some bars in the middle, right? Like it's not even that deep of a of a tunnel, right? Of a warehouse tunnel. It's really not that deep at all. But when you go into the camera, you got to play with your, your lens sizes and stuff like that, your focal length to really kind of get what you're looking for. What I've been up to, man, I've just been grinding. Oh, my foot fell asleep. I've just been grinding school, bro. Like, I'm about to graduate in a month. Um, yeah, man, I've just really been working. Really been working. Working on my craft. Oh, my foot fell asleep and I don't like it. It feels funny. But, um... You know, like, you don't need to make a, a, a complex scene. It's all about what's being seen by the camera, right? So I'm never going to show that 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 shot open of the open side, right? Like, I'm going to try to avoid you seeing this big this big open gap over here and kind of keep you in camera and focused in on what's what's happening on the inside, right? Which is why all my shots are either tight, angled, so that you'll never see that outside. Yeah, I remember you, Matt. I just didn't know that. I think you had a few accounts that you would always use too. So, but I do, I do. You were one of the OGs that was always in my Madden streams when I did when I did stream a lot. Um, but yeah, like just coming up with tricks of how to hide your imperfections and showing your perfections right now we'll kind of talk about the modeling aspect you're looking at this right and you're like how did he do that how did he do this bar stuff well i'm going to be honest with you did i model it no i didn't because if i can find something out there that's either cheap or free that's allowed to be used i'm going to use it because one Render or modeling is time consuming, which is going to cost more money for people, and nobody likes to spend more money than what they have to, right? For from a client standpoint, so finding a way that'll save the client money, save you time, so you're both happy at the end of the day, is the end goal. So I went out and I found a warehouse look that was free. I'm also not going to pay for a personal project, so went out found found this model optimized it to what i had to use to make it fit right and just rocked it out with it right so this is what the bars look like and something that you can do so let's let's go in here and let's grab nope nope this null is that that first one yeah so this first null is going to be i believe yeah that so there's, there's different ways that you can do this right to save on render time and uh to save on the lag for your viewer oh rat two i don't even know what that is what is that i honestly have no clue what that is but anyways um there's something called the cloner which is right here and basically it's like it's making geometry but it's not making geometry so it'll it'll save on on render time. It'll save on a few other things, but I don't know why I didn't do that. But for this scene, I didn't. But it didn't make too much of a difference. The bigger the scene, the more difference it'll make because the more segments you have, right? So let's put on our lines. Why are they not showing? Strange. Oh yeah, they are. So the more the more segments you have on stuff per scene, right? Like all of this. The more of this you have, the more of that you have, it's going to create uh, longer rendering scenes. So being able to keep your segments down into a certain a certain degree where it's not overloading a, a render, that's that's key. If you guys are new to the stream, make sure you guys drop a like. I'll uh I'll try and stream more, kind of show my workflow for some stuff. But um I mean really like you just gotta get in there, but I'll kinda I'll kinda walk through some stuff and relate to Photoshop for some of you guys to to kinda understand. 
Yeah, I don't know what that is, bro. I'm going to be honest. I'm terrible with movie titles, so I probably have seen it. But um, we're going to talk about this back wall real quick just to kind of show you. You may think, like, did he render that? Like, that looks... Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Did I break it? Where am I? Okay. There we go. I do not play Madden, bro. I stopped playing that after 19. Never bought 20. <sighs> yeah, James, it's not clicking. It's really not clicking. I really don't know what it is. I'll have to look it up after I'm done streaming. Let's see. But like this back wall, it's a lot simpler than what you think, right? So you have a cube, right? You have a cube. You have all of these segments over here, which creates these boxes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not buying Twenty One either. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm done with that company as a whole. I'm just moving on, doing better things in my life. It's not worth it. I'm actually really into Marvel Avengers, and I can see where that null should have been pushed in backwards more initially, but that's all right. Um, so it's just a simple cube, man. You know, it's a lot of segments. Then you put a displacer on it, right? So then you start getting some of this ridging going on. Like a lot of these segments start to move around and do their own thing. It's randomized. And then you slap a mo extrude on there. And then this is basically extrusion of your segments, which gets this cool, pretty look, which I, I thought came out pretty cool. So I kind of stuck with it. The back wall, right? Now the question is, okay. So now we have this scene. How can I make it easier on myself where I don't have to re-render this back shot for every single player and optimize render time? Yo, Dirt 5 did look pretty dope, not gonna lie. I think I remember seeing the trailer for that. Um, and how we're gonna optimize this scene. All right, Matt, appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it, brother. Peace out. Thanks for stopping in. Um, where was I? Oh, so thinking about how we can optimize the shot to make sense for saving time, basically, right? Um, which would be to either do it in post or do it in cinema and figuring out how you can just make it look good while keeping it in a certain time frame in front of time frame so for example right like let's say they wanted to use a shot over and over again but they didn't have time to re-render everything and they had to to put a player in and out at every single second during a broadcast game they're able to do that with the, the workflow that i have set up but they wouldn't be able to do that if you know you had to render out every scene which would which would take time which is still okay depending on the scenario sometimes they might want it to be a part of the scene in camera rather than in post which means it would have to take more time to render out every single player every single coach every single stat sheet all that stuff would have to be included in the graphics package so that they can just click around and switch out easily by the click of a button right now i'm going to kind of talk to you guys about like my workflow for cinema so cinema standard right which would be this guy um uses cpu if you don't know what cpu is it's your central processing unit um so like intel i7 or um what, what's the other uh i forgot the other brand of processors that are out there amd yeah amd um that's what standard is going to use which is going to be a lot slower and take a lot more time so basically what happens right Let's say I'm sitting on Cinema 4D standard or physical. What I would need to do, right, is let's say I had a texture on here. Let's say I wanted it to be reflective. If I put a reflective texture on it, I would have to hit this little render button, which could take two minutes to render that one frame, could take five minutes to render that one frame, right? Could take all this time to render one frame just to see if it looks right. And if it doesn't look right, then you have to go back, change the reflection, and the roughness and you know 
make it less reflective, and then re-render that entire frame from the beginning all over again for another five minutes until you get it the way you want to. And if you have to continuously do that, you're spending hours and hours on hours just getting a texture the way you want it to, right? So what I decided to do was invest in myself and create a PC and get something called Octane. Octane is a third party renderer that uses GPU, which is your graphic processing unit, which is 10 times better than a CPU would be for a lot of this stuff. And it allows you to see real time renders. So this is my live view report for Octane, right? So if I hit this little gear, which is Octane or Otoy, I guess would be the right, right brand name. Um, so right now it's actually converting all of my materials and it's updating and now I'm getting this real this real time look right so if I move around it's gonna update etc it's gonna give me this real time look if I go inside camera you know I'm gonna get real time looks I'm gonna get re real time changes real time everything so then it's about thinking all right how how can I make a texture look good with octane now that's all personal opinion right so now I can go in here and let's say Let's, let's grab this back wall, let's see what this texture is. So that texture is this one. And let's say I wanted it to be a totally different color. Let's say I wanted it to be completely red, right? I can come in here and boom, it updates on the fly. Like I can do that so quick and it saves a lot of time. Like I'm already like done with this. I can move on to the next, the next scene, the next shot. You can texture that quickly I Can put the lighting in quickly. I can do all these things real time to save me time at the end of the day, which saves the, saves the client money, saves me time. We're both happy at the end of the day. The results are 10 times better with Octane and Redshift than you would get out of physical. You can get these looks out of physical, but you're gonna be eating up a lot of render time that clients aren't necessarily willing to pay for and you know make, make that investment into a render. All right, so now we'll kind of talk about how I get the 3D look with the logo, I guess. Yeah, that'd probably be a good, good thing to talk about. Um, okay, let me see. All right, so for those of you that use, well, let's get it on the ground actually. For those of you that use Photoshop, this is gonna be related to that to kind of help. So in Photoshop, right, you have masking, right? And with masking, it allows you to outline what you want to keep and outline what you want to get rid of. This is kind of that same concept if you can wrap your head around it. So in cinema, you have you have things called splines. And splines, in a sense, if you think about it as a mask, they're basically the same thing. It's creating an outline of what you want to show. So this is going to be the same thing and we'll kind of walk through it. So right now, right, we have this outer path, which is kind of hard to see. But it's this line right here, if you can see it. Um, wait, was I in camera? I wasn't, okay. And then in order to get that to show in the render, right, you have to grab something called an extrude, which is right here, this little guy. That's called an extrude, which basically gives it depth, right? which gives it depth, which is this right here. It's a lot simpler than what people might think it may be, but you give it some depth and then you can go inside of here. And what you always, always should be doing is beveling your edges and giving them some sort of uh, cap or like some stair stepping caps because that's what will pick up the highlights of your lights and make it more cinematic than what it is without beveling your edges having no beveled edges you're not going to pick up details and little tiny things that can make a huge difference in a render and a 3d look so now moving on to the second outer one we have let me turn that off we have this out, out outer one which is like the biggest one right um so we turn that on we're doing the same thing we're, we're kind of giving giving it giving it life giving it all these cool things uh, to give it character, right? So we have our depth, 
for that, which is glass. And then we have this back one on, right? So it's creating this kind of refractive, cool material while picking up highlights, but keeping, keeping the standardized color scheme that we're going for. Um, so now we'll move on to the white star. Same, same thing, right? We're, we're putting our, our, our extrude on, we're sticking it in the other extrudes and you'll you'll see it's kind of picking up some some shadows from from the light it's starting to catch that light but it it's not doing what i wanted to do so then i was like okay well let me put another star on top that is also a glass texture that'll be able to pick up those highlights and details and kind of bring it to life and kind of did the same thing for the the blue part where it was just the white in the back with a blue glass and I did the same for the red for both of these red glass with the white white background and you're, you're never gonna see up in here right you're never gonna see way back there you're only gonna be seeing from like this shot so you'll never really know if there's white back there or if it's blue so that's kind of how I go about doing my project Ooh, about doing my projects is you know just investing in yourself if you're really serious about 3d I would highly suggest moving to a PC. A Mac will not be able to handle a third party renderer the way a PC can. Workflow is huge. Fast workflow is huge in 3D and this is becoming the industry standard from what I've heard and what I've read and what I've seen is that PCs are becoming the main for uh, motion graphics and having a third party renderer will just, it'll step up your game so much more You'll be able to crank out more work and be able to create higher quality work and get people's attention a lot easier um so that's just my opinion and the way that i would do things and now we'll kind of talk about how i got this broken up floor um and how i kind of did that what's up everyone if you guys are new what's happening if you guys follow me on twitter you know that I was talking about how I wanted to kind of show my workflow. If you guys are new here, feel free to say something in the chat and uh, feel free to hang out, kind of watch as I kind of explained. It probably sounds a little confusing the way I am explaining it, but it's honestly not as complicated as it looks. Once you get in here and you start playing around with these things, you'll start to really get used to how it works and how you go about everything that, that you do. Thanks, James. Appreciate that, bro. All right. So now we're going to move to the floor. And the floor, I have two, two floors here for a specific reason, reasoning. And I'll kind of walk through it. So basically, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll turn that one off for now. We'll turn that off for now. Okay. So the way I have the shot set up, right? So from this shot, you're looking at it. Looks a lot deeper than what the initial model that I showed, right? because of using my um, Talib retired? No way. This had to have just happened. I mean, he, he was getting clapped pretty hard though, like the last two years of his career from, from what I saw. Um, what was I saying? Um, oh, the floor. So with this, right, there's two ways that you can go about getting this floor to explode. Something called dynamic simulation which will, you have to cache your simulation when you're ready to render, or you can get away with using effectors, which is what I prefer to use because it saves on render time and in the viewport for a lot of situations. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be animating while having your live viewer playing because that'll slow down, slow down time tremendously. So make sure that your live viewer is always paused when you're doing animation. Only have it ready for when you're doing texturing. That's just from what I've seen, right? And then I'll go into detail about, you know, multi-passing and like how I would composite a shot uh, so that I have more control in posts with, you know, bumping things up and brightness and desaturating and things like that. It's going to be a podcast host. I have noticed that being a trend, it's like when these players retire recently, like, I'm noticing a lot more podcasts are being a thing nowadays. Like podcasts have really just taken off the last two years. Like huge, huge, hugely improved. So 
the way that I did the shot, right? If I was to do dynamic simulation, the way it would work is the minute that this logo hits this ground, it would it would already explode. Like it would already have some some explosive fragments in it, right? Yeah, dude, Pat McAfee is funny. Being a punter, he's pretty funny. Um so if I was to do dy dynamic simulation, like I said, the minute that this logo hits the ground, you're gonna get an explosion and the parts are gonna fly up, fly all over the place, but then they'll never reset. And that all depends on how you do your simulation, right? Like there's a lot of different ways to do it, um, but I feel like effectors kind of work well for a lot of the stuff. Um, Cause you don't really always need a true 100% realistic dynamic simulation. Like you can always just kind of fake it, like fake it till you make it. If it looks great faking it, keep it it'll save time on render it'll just make a lot more sense paul Molo in the sea gap right right so the way i did it right so i have my floor i have my floor right looks normal then i have the voronoi fracture which is where it's broken up right so inside your voronoi fracture you would go to sources sources yep and then go to point generator and this is where you can add more points or take away more points the more points you have the tinier the pieces are going to be which is going to give you more of an like a true explosion and not just a bunch of chunks right so the look that i was going for was like the minute that that logo hit i wanted like a like a synth wave kind of thing to hit where like it created the earthquake but then the, the ground would reset and only crack in the little area by where the logo hit if that makes any sense so what i did was right so you have your boronoi fracture then you have your effectors which are going to be up here these are what you would call your effectors and then to have those effectors work you have to use linear fields torus fields all that stuff right so i have my first shock wave which is um Where is it? Somewhere in here, I gotta find it. Ah, here we go. So what this torus does, right, is this torus creates like a radius. So basically anything dead in the center isn't going to move, but then where the torus is, right? So let's say I have a torus here. That's a tour. It's more like a cylinder, right? Everything that's in between those two lines is what's going to break and expand. Everything that's way inside isn't going to do anything. So that basically gives it like a ring, right? It's like a ring explosion, basically. And then this secondary plane that I have is being used to create and keep this crack in here, right? So as you can see from the torus, right, it's creating a ring. A ring explosion right it's getting a ring explosion going and then that spherical field is keeping it's keeping that 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 crack in there So that's basically how I would do something like this for this specific project. And then to get the glow that, that was in my, um, my post, right? So the way that I did that was I create, I made a duplicate of that floor and I made it white, right? So this will allow me to object buffer it in post to make it easier to, to direct select something, which we'll go into here in a minute, uh, once I get through this. So as you can see, when I hit the rent, this render button, you'll see that we have some white in there and this white is completely separate from the rest and as you can see down here I have my passes so I have my main pass which has a lot of noise by the way based off of the scene so the better solution is to be using my denoised pass which is what I'll be using in post then I have my reflection pass which will basically only be used for this backplate to composite my shots together 
and then I have my noise, which, you know, might be used for something, might not be used for something, really depends on what I use it for, right? But as you can see from this, this, this noise pass, there's a lot of freaking noise going on here, man. Like a lot, all over the place, a lot of noise because of the scene being so low, low lit. And then we have something called a crypto material node, which basically grabs all of the information from all your materials and separates them into their own color scheme. So all these, all this pink is all the same material. Um, let's see. And then all these are going to be different because they're like these. Oh, go away. But I don't know if you can see it. These tubes are going to be the same because they're the same material. But everything in here is going to be completely different because they're all their own material names and their own colors, right? So that's gonna allow you in post to really object buffer what you wanna object buffer and add brightness, desaturation, etc. Then you have an AO pass, which for Octane won't really be used, but for physical and standard, you might wanna always have a, a, a AO pass, which is an ambient occlusion pass, which will give you some harder shadows and basically only on contact and where the light's hitting, it will create those hard shadows for you. And then post is for the lights um, to allow me to composite them in post, which we're gonna actually move over to here shortly. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you was the, the tubes over here. So we'll kind of go back, kind of go into the shot and you see that from the animation, this continuously goes and builds on. Same, th same thing with an effector same situation if you guys ever have any questions feel free to message me on twitter and i will try to uh get back to you as soon as possible i know sometimes i'm a little slow on that but um yeah that that's that's kind of how i did the scene um a lot of the modeling wasn't really done it was just pulled pulled information from the internet and it saved me a lot of time and that's the value of this industry is how, how can you save time and make something really, really dope that a client will love because the client doesn't really care if you model, they don't care about, they're not paying you for modeling. They're paying you for a hot look, a uh, hot graphic, something that'll bring their, their, their town, their city, their team uh, to life. They're not worried about the modeling. Now, sometimes you might have to model something. So learning modeling is still a necessity but it's not always needed if you can find something out there that'll save you a lot more time and allow you to make something a lot more cooler without having to worry about modeling something to perfection. So anything with products, the chances of you modeling a product is very rare. Unless it's something that just came out and there's no model out there and they're hiring a modeler to do it, that's, that would be something that you would do. But if you're someone that doesn't model, that's not the industry that you're aiming for. But if you do model, that's the industry you should be aiming for is getting your topology down, making it the best and as perfected as possible because without it, it's not going to look great. I think that was basically everything I wanted to show on the C4D side and we'll, um, do I want to save? No. Look at that. Look at that background. Beautiful. Uh, let's go into After Effects now. All right, see you, James. Thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. Gotta get this render going again once I once I get off of here soon, which th this shouldn't take too long. Uh, I know I kind of went through a lot on the C4D side, but I think it was worth worth kind of showing everything and how I did it. Okay, Steelers. So where I have all my comps. And we'll just kind of go with the Patriot stuff. Um, Cause the Steeler stuff I have to re-render technically. Uh, Cause the, the timing doesn't match on anything. So the Steelers one, I just kind of rendered it out for the style frames. If After Effects doesn't crash, that'd be awesome. Oh, cool, it's already open. 
I can sort of close that. We will close that. Uh, that. That. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have Cam Newton, Edelman, James White, Gilmore. Thought I had another one. Definitely did have another one. I don't know where it went. No, they're all here. Just kidding. Okay. So we'll kind of, I guess we'll just start from the beginning. This is on quarter resolution, by the way, so it's not going to be the best quality. Um, come on. There we go. All right. So here, right, I have all my audio on the same thing. I know some people prefer to do it in Premiere, but I like After Effects, and I'm going to keep it in that. That's just my how my workflow goes, and I'm not really going to change it. Um, so for this first shot, this is the, the tube shot that I was telling you guys about with the light effector. Um, so how I kind of did it was, so I have my main, I guess I can solve that. So I have my main shot, right? Which doesn't have any glow on it yet. But this is my denoise beauty shot that we talked about um, using instead of the actual main render because the main render had way too much noise and the denoise beauty kind of gets rid of a lot of that noise and has a lot less flickering happening. There might still be a flicker every now and then, but it's not noticeable enough where you're going to catch it with your eye because it's moving so quick. So then you put on your post-processing layer, which is what I talked about with having my lighting on its own render pass and setting it to always add or screen unless it's ambient occlusion that goes on multiply. Everything else is always gonna be add or screen depending on which look you want is whatever one you're gonna choose, right? So not much of a difference, but there is a slight difference where you might like one more than the other. Um, so that's the first shot, nothing too fancy, right? Second shot, nothing really too fancy. Kind of the same same thing, just getting the main Denoise Beauty pass down with the post-processing uh, shot in there too. Same with the next shot, same thing. And then, you know, we're kind, of, we're kind of getting into this compositing shot, which is what mainly is what I wanted to show you guys and how this works. So how this works, right? So you have your main beauty, right? Your main beauty shot. I guess I should solo it instead. And then you have your Cam Newton graphic, which is something simple, not any animation to it. Right. Then after that, you have a, another Denoise Beauty Pass, right? Which is this. And then what you need to do is as you can see, I'm, I can click around this is the crypto material notes that I was telling you about where you can just click and it will create an object buffer, set it to matte only so that it's just using black and white values. And then you turn it off and you put your Cam Newton graphic on a Luma mat, which is basically telling it, okay, I want you to use this object buffer for this layer only, which as you can see is all of this. So anything outside of this in this black area is gonna, gonna get cut off on the graphic, which is Cam Newton. Anything below here is getting cut off, right? So then we put our AO pass on, which allows Cam to feel more a part of the scene. As you can tell, putting the AO really puts him a part of it. And then I had to boost the black values a little bit to kind of make it feel more realistic. And then you put your reflection on, whether it's on screen, or add that's all up to you and the next thing i did was i was like okay so an issue that i was having was the reflection was doubling on everything right and i'm like well i don't want it to double i only want it the reflection to show up on cam newton so what i had to do was create another copy of the cam newton intro put it right above the reflection set your reflection to alpha mat which is basically telling this reflection okay anything outside of cam newton do not put the reflection there. Only put the reflection 
inside of Cam Newton's graphic. And that's all I want you to do. So that's what I had to do. So then the next thing is like, okay, well, how is it tracking? How is it being put there? So what needs to happen next is you need to import your C4D file. You import your C4D file down here, and that's gonna have all of the information from your C4D file. And inside of the C4D file, you need to make sure you have an external compositing tag on a null where you want to be tracking in a post. So I extracted, I extracted the information, I grabbed the camera, I grabbed the null, which is right here, which is this whole back wall that, that's basically the null, and I'm telling After Effects, all right, I want this Cam Newton graphic to follow the exact coordinates that are on this, this null to allow it to feel like it's a part of the scene and not being hand animated where it's got jigged animation or jigged rotation or jigged like rigged positioning, stuff like that. So it's only After Effects, okay, keep this null. And the only way that it's gonna do that is if I have this camera in here too from my C4D file. Without this camera from my C4D file, it's not going to read this information. This camera is reading the information from C4D saying, okay, that's the null in C4D. And without that, as you can see, it's not there, which won't allow for Cam Newton to be put anywhere. And I forgot to mention that always make sure when you're extracting a null from C4D and you wanna track that null with your graphic, always put it in 3D space. If it's not in 3D space, it won't track correctly because it's a 3D scene and that's how it's gonna work. So then after that, you know, you kind of have your shot. And then now what I can do is like, all right, well, I want Edelman there. I can come in here, boom, put Edelman twice, set it up right, boom, render it, done, move on to the next player. Next player, James White, boom, put it in there, put the graphic in there, boom, done. Next thing you know, Stefan Gilmore, put him in there, boom, done. Uh, and then I can go to another team if I wanted to. The only thing that would have to be re-rendered is just the shot with the different colors, which only takes like an hour to render. So it's not anything excessive, and that's the way that I would do it. Um, and then this last shot is just very simple. It's nothing crazy. Um, the camera shake is done in post. It's not done in camera because I don't really like the way that it looks in camera. So in post, it just kind of came out better. So that's what I went with. And this is the same thing, having your main, your main shot denoise pass, and then having your post-processing of your lights and i should probably talk about this because it's very important to talk about that okay so in here right i have an object buffer on that that white material that i was telling you guys about before right so i extracted the information clicked on the white material boom done and then inside of here you know i have red giant which is honestly probably the best plugin for after effects when i'm sad that when it expires i'm going to start paying for it because it won't be on the student license anymore but that's okay. Um, so instead of here, you have your optical glow, which is Red Giant, which allows it to really get that pop, um, that that true white glow that you would see on a lot of stuff, on a lot of um, like LED tubes or whatever, or glow sticks, stuff like that. It's mostly white with like a tint of a different color, right? And then I have Deep Glow, which my buddy gave me, shout out to him. Um, which kind of pushes that that glow to give it color and make it feel like it's glowing like I mean, there's really not much else to say and that that's that's kind of the whole the whole workflow like it, it it may sound confusing but it's actually pretty pretty simple and yeah i mean that, that's really it i know people on twitter ask all the time how i do this stuff and i figured why not why not stream it show it to the world and you know, see see what you guys think. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, appreciate all the love and support as always on everything um, that that I do post. You guys are freaking awesome for that. So um, yeah, that's really all I got. I think I'm I'm gonna end the stream. If you guys got any questions, hit me up on Twitter. But uh, yeah, guys, have a good one. Peace out.